Okay, so now we've pretty much finished this application, but I want to introduce another concept right now, and that is this idea of reducers. Now, using reducers is basically just a pattern of coding which centralizes all of our methods for changing state into a single function. It's an approach you might be familiar with if you've already worked with Redux in the past. They use reducers. Now, right now, this book context provider component, it has two functions right here, add book and remove book, and they both interact with the state. Now, in the future, if we were to make a bigger app or extend this app, then it might be that we have four or five functions that interact with the state and do different things. And then we'd have to pass each one of those functions into this value property right here. And then when we consume this context, we'd have to get all of those functions separately in our components which use them. Now, instead, what we could do is consolidate all of our functions into one single reducer function, which is gonna make the app easier to maintain in the long run. Now, this is just a coding pattern, and I do wanna clarify that you don't have to use reducers if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. But for the rest of us, let's see how we can use reducers in our project. So the way that we use reducers can be broken down into three different parts. First of all, we have a reducer function, and that contains all of our state manipulation logic. It interacts with the state and changes the data. Then we have an action object, which describes the type of change that we want to make inside this reducer function. For example, we could have a type property with add book, and that's saying that we want the reducer function to add a new book to the state or the data. And then finally, we have a dispatch function, which sends the action to the reducer. So we call this function, we pass in the action that goes to the reducer, it makes the change to the state. So imagine that we had our component and we wanted to add a new book when a button is clicked or something like that. Well, first of all, we'd create an action object and that describes the type of change that we want to make. And we can also pass in a payload here too, which is a second argument. And that's the actual new book that we want to add in this case. I've not added in the, uh, the title and the author properties, just imagine they're there. And then the next step would be to dispatch that action to the reducer using a dispatch function. Now the reducer takes in the action as a parameter. It also takes in the state of whatever data we're manipulating. So if it's the books, this is gonna represent the books state. So it takes in those two parameters right there. Now, when it runs the function, the reducer, it looks at this thing right here, the action, and it checks the type. So action.type, that's this thing. And then based on that, it runs some different logic to update the state object. So in this case, it would be to add a book. So it would take this state and it would add that new book to the state. If it was a delete book type, then it would check the action type again, and then delete that book from the state. And in this case, the payload would be maybe the ID of the book we want to delete and not the book itself. So then once we've updated the state, we return that state and that goes back into the provider value. So when we provide it to different components in the future and they consume it, when it updates over here, they're gonna get that updated value and re-render appropriately. So, that's the basics of how a reducer works from a bird's eye perspective. Now, I just want to show you a very simple example of one in action before we apply this to our project. So just to demo this, I've got open CodePen and what I've done is just make a dummy context and context provider right here. So it's the same kind of stuff that we've been doing in the past lessons. So we've imported create context and use states then we've created this context called age context, and then we have our provider component, which takes in the props. Then we use state to set an initial value of 20. We return the age and set age, that's the function. Then we have three functions here that can interact with this piece of state. The first one is add one to age, and that just adds one to this number right here using set age. Then add five to age, which adds five and then add num to age, which takes in a parameter num, and then we add that number to age using set age. So we're just interacting with the state. Then down here in the provider value, we're passing down the age itself, then all of these functions. So what I'm gonna do is show you how we'd use the reducer way instead of this. So the first thing we do is import a hook called use reducer like so, 
and then instead of defining our data like this, which I'm going to comment out, instead we'd say const age and we get back a function which we'll call dispatch this time. So not set age, but dispatch. And we set that equal to use reducer. And still we set an initial value for this 20, but we also pass in another parameter which comes before this, and that will be the name of our reducer. Now we've not created that reducer yet, but we'll call it age reducer. So what we're saying here is, look, we want to use a reducer to control this piece of state. Now we're passing back this, which is the actual data, the value of the state, but also this dispatch method. This reducer hook right here gives us this dispatch method. And this would be the function that we use in the future to send our action to this age reducer. So let's now define that age reducer. I'm not going to write it all out because that would take me a little while. Instead, what I'm going to do is just come down here and paste this in. So it's just a function called age reducer. That was the name we passed in right here. And we take in two parameters, the state and an action. These are the other way around from the slides. I do apologize. It is this way around state first, then the action. So inside this reducer right here, we have this switch statement and all that's doing is evaluating the action type remember on an action we have a type property so if that type was add one for example then we'd return state plus one so it takes the current state which is 20 it adds one to that then it returns it so this value would go to 21 and when we pass it down here it would be 21 so all the components consuming this context would see that update same goes for if the case was add five if the action type was add five, then it would add five to the state and return that. If it was add num, it would take the action dot num, and this would be the payload, and we'll see that in a second, and it would add that to the state, then return it. The default case is just a catch-all in case none of these ones were satisfied, and it just returns the state without changing it. So that would be our reducer. Now, what we do is instead of using functions like this, we wouldn't call those functions and we wouldn't pass those functions down. Instead, we'd pass down a dispatch like this. And that is a function which we call to dispatch an action to a reducer. So what we could do, for example, is something like this. We could say dispatch and then we pass in the action. There's a type property and that type could be add underscore one. And what that would do is say, OK, well, I want to dispatch this action to this reducer right here and then when it gets to the reducer it takes in the action it looks at the type which is add one and so it adds one to the state and returns that therefore age gets one added to it and that value is updated over here does that make sense so we're passing this dispatch function down into a component which is where we could be calling this from and then we're passing that action into the reducer and we know it's this reducer because we say age reducer which matches up with this dispatch function, and then it updates the state. So another example could be dispatch, and then inside we'd have a type of add underscore num, and then because it's add num, it expects also this extra property on the action. So we'd say that num is equal to seven, for example, and then when we call this function dispatch, it sends the action to the reducer again. It checks the action type. Well, it's add num. So it comes to this case. Then it returns the state plus action dot num, which is this thing right here, plus seven. So it adds seven to the state, then returns it. Therefore, this is now 27 or whatever it is at that point. And it gets updated in all the components which consume the context. So the benefit here is that we're only ever passing down one function, not all of the different functions, just one function. And that's all we need to use in our components. And we're just passing in these different objects to that one function. And also we're keeping all of our logic inside one reducer function. So now we know the bare bones of how reducers work and how to use the use reducer hook. Let's go ahead and use this in our book list application.